How will Jupiter and Capricorn speak to you and your sign? Find out at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of December 29, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now for the last horoscope of the year, of the decade. How exciting is this? Now, first of all, I do want to address the elephant in the room, which is... The lunar eclipse coming up at the end of next week i feel like there is not enough attention being paid to all the incredible things that are happening right now and this week as well because everyone has their eye on what's coming up what's coming up at the end of next week at the very beginning of the following week which of course is the saturn pluto conjunction now i will be here to talk about all of that every step of the way every week uh, and there is the astrology of 2020 and Jupiter in Capricorn horoscope that I did that is on my YouTube channel. I will link to it below. So you can start to get a little bit of a heads up, but I am going to invite us all to gently bring ourselves back to the present because the present is where the power is. And the present right now has a lot of really incredible things happening that are about helping us to ultimately make the most of the rare and beautiful event that recently took place, which was a solar eclipse conjunct Jupiter and trine Uranus. Well, it is this week that's going to help us in this regard, help us to come back into the present, help us to focus in on what really matters, which is right here, right now, and will help us to maximize and create momentum moving forward from the eclipse. And this is thanks to Mercury. Right out of the gate as we start this week, Mercury will move into the sign of Capricorn very quickly. Will Trine will speak in supreme harmony with Uranus. That is a conversation of luck and of leaping forward. Then Mercury will move forward to cross the eclipse point. And that is move over the part of the sky that the eclipse very recently took place in, and it will be right around Thursday, that Mercury will meet Jupiter in the sky as well, maximizing the awareness of the healing and hopeful energy that has been going out, that has been wanting to reach us. Now, Mercury is mind, it is awareness, it's conversations and communications of all kinds, it's information as well. But Uranus is also curiosity yes he is the messenger of the gods and messenger of the gods delivers messages like letters right like text messages but our inspiration and our ideas are also messages from divine aspects of ourselves and all of it is divine all of whom it is that we are is divine yes we are multifaceted we are complex beings but it is all an expression of divine energy and so our ideas our inspiration our creativity our brainstorming our brilliance these also are a part of mercury these also are divine messages from our higher selves or within ourselves and sometimes when we're lucky we get to glimpse them they come forward and they come into our awareness and if it is that we practice intention with what comes into our awareness well that is when we start to use these messages to our advantage in some way we start to use these messages to create momentum to move us forward we honor the inspiration when it comes and inspiration can come at all kinds of times right very often it is inspiration that comes if you speak to artists of all kinds they talk about how they're falling asleep and that's when they have a great song idea or artistic idea that's because their conscious mind is winding down their conscious mind is not as active you can call it the ego right all the things that you want and why you want it and how you go about getting it all of that can be very much at the forefront but then we have these moments, these moments where in an instant, because we have allowed 
all of that, all of that noise, all of that ego, all of that fear to calm down, something deeper from within can come forward. Something that is more creative or more peaceful. And when we're connected to that voice, that is a type of peace that can be experienced, right? Some people call it grace, but we think of it as grace when it's a, a message of love. Those are great messages as well. But any truth about yourself, any truth of expression is ultimately a type of grace also. And so the energy this week is inviting us to bring forward the eclipse energy of recently. It is inviting us now to not only contemplate and considerate, but to further develop, to be open to insight and to be open to moments of synchronicity as well. Now, I might come back to Mercury in a moment, but I did want to talk about what is happening towards the end of the week. Right around Friday, Mars is moving into the sign of Sagittarius. And I know that I said we're gonna stay in the present, but I have been uh, considering a lot and thinking about um, and coming across information, right, as part of synchronicity. Synchronicity is ultimately a relationship that we have with our inner world and our outer world. It is taking what is happening in our external environment uh, and using it as an omen, a jumping off point, if you will, to point to some deeper appreciation, some deeper self-knowledge, some deeper awareness. And in this way, we start building a relationship. And astrology is an act of synchronicity because it reminds us of our connection to our outer world by taking it really outer, right? Taking it really meta, taking it all the way to uh, the stars and the planets, but synchronicity and the act of synchronicity can happen in the moments that are right here, right now, and right in front of us too. So lately, synchronistically so, I've been coming across a lot of information uh, around new religious movements, and I did want to talk about this in the context of this week and what we have coming up. And this is actually something that I'm going to flush out a lot more because I'm having further thoughts about 2020 that I really want to share. But to give you a, a little bit of a heads up, you know, I remember years ago when I was in graduate school, uh, my program was uh, cosmology and divination. And the graduate school programs, like in my university, uh, were sort of clustered in their own way. And so we had this very broad, broad umbrella of the School of European Cultures and Languages. And within that, we had the Faculty of Religious Studies. And then within that, there were different departments as well. And so we were part of a little cluster. We had a sister program. So my program was Cosmology and Divination, and the sister program was the MA in Mysticism. And we were able to take each other's seminars, even though we sort of reported to and had our own professors and directors. Uh, we were able to participate at times, attend the lectures at times of each other's seminars, and it was always uh, wonderful and fascinating. So I remember one semester, I got to sit in for the whole semester a series of seminars on uh, new religious movements of the 20th century. And this class was so interesting because we talked about different people who had been um, instrumental in new religious movements like Carl Jung, like Osho. So we had these different seminars and insights into these people. but. What struck me really was the first couple of seminars. It's always the beginning that I think is really important to get down. If you understand things on a very foundational level from the very beginning, it becomes that much easier to grow forward from there. Everything else makes so much sense going forward from there. And that's why I think that um, foundations can always be made stronger. It's always a good idea, for example, if you are a student of astrology, of course, and while it is helpful and good to learn more and to uh, grow towards the intermediary and advanced techniques, it's always fun as well. And that's part of learning astrology. It's meant to be fun. It is an enjoyable thing, but it is the foundational 
stuff that ultimately ensures that we are standing on solid ground and that we ensure that the ground we stand on is strong throughout our time of practice, whether that's a year or whether that's decades. I loved the first seminars because they talked about how it is that a new religious movement is formed. So with any new religious movements, there tend to be a few kind of key characteristics. There's like this natural beginning, and then it goes to an arc as, as religions tend to evolve. And we've had a chance now as humanity to see several religions evolve over thousands of years. And some are more newer than others. But we know that in the very beginning, uh, what happens is the people who are drawn to a new religious movement, they tend to feel like an outsider in some way. And that could be for a variety of reasons, but uh, sometimes it's you know economic reasons, uh, sometimes it's uh, physical disability, social class tends to be a big part, historically speaking, as well. And so it is this new religious movement that is promising uh, equality of some kind. The other characteristic tends to be that uh, there is uh, a desire for bliss. Like the people, they're searching for something. They are wanting something. They are seeking something. So that might just be, if you're an outsider, you're seeking belonging. That can be a big part of it. For some people, they're searching for meaning. And so you have to be in a state of spirit where you are open on some level, even if consciously you tell yourself you're not on some inner level, uh, normally there is a sense of searching. Now, the other characteristic that's really interesting is that in order to be open to a new religious movement and the first people who join religious movements, they tend to be kind of rebellious as well. They got that little bit of a rebel in them because if you think about it, to be open to a new religious movement, it does mean that on some level, you're saying, I am moving away from the traditional uh, religious paradigm or religious movement uh, that I have known, right? And in some contexts, in some cultures, in some historical periods, especially, people are very committed to, make very strong others of people who believe differently than the tradition or what is established. Uh, people who challenge the structure are not often seen very favorably. So these tend to be some primary characteristics that get a religious movement going even in the first place. So I could keep talking about this because I've contemplated it a lot uh, over the years, certainly when I was a student, contemplated and discussed it a lot. And I'm actually gonna save some of this for a further thoughts on 2020 video that I'm hoping to do uh, very soon. So we'll save the rest of that because there's a whole lot I could say. I have already been speaking about this a little bit in the 2020 year ahead video on YouTube and the 2019 video uh, year ahead video on YouTube as well. So I'll try to link to those videos uh, below. But I mention it now in the context of what is happening towards the end of the week, which is Mars moving into the sign of Sagittarius. Now, this happens about once every two years, right? New religious movements, a lot more rare. Well, there might be a lot more, but they kind of, you know, peter out after a little while. In order for one to really make a mark on humanity and on history, well, that is uh, something that is much more rare. And that discussion fits in uh, much more with uh, what we have coming up as we move towards the end of next week with that eclipse, but more importantly, as we move to the very beginning of the following week, right around January 12th, and all of the amazing energy that is going to be coming up uh, as reflective of the incredible times that we are living in right now. But having said that, Mars in Sagittarius is powerful as well. And it's powerful in that it gets us in touch with our beliefs in a more passionate way. It helps us to understand and connect with a, a sense of conviction as to what it is in terms of the philosophies and the spiritual beliefs, the religious beliefs, the religious paradigms, the political beliefs and political paradigms that guide our life. But 
unlike the energy of Capricorn, which is being magnified increasingly more and more as we're moving forward from here, and started with the eclipse, of course, and will continue as we move into this brand new decade this week as well. Um, with Capricorn, it's a lot more about the structures, right? It's a lot more about the systems in place. And it is uh, when something becomes a symbol of power that we start to find people become restless with it, or at least a certain part of the population. We start to find people more open to other considerations, other contemplations, um, they start to grow a little bit rebellious or a lot rebellious enough to be open to other paradigms. And what's interesting is that while we have all this very strong Capricornian energy, there's Mars moving into the sign of Sagittarius at the end of this week. And it is Mars in Sagittarius that uh, is a fascinating energy because Sagittarius, unlike the energy of Capricorn, it is so much about self. It, yes, it's about the self in a larger context, in a larger world, but it is about um, your own experiences ultimately guiding you towards what it is that you are going to uniquely believe. And in that way, the energy is a lot more personal than Capricornian energy. Whereas with Capricorn, it represents the systems and the structures and the powers, right? And we see this, if we look back, and here I am stepping back into the larger context, but uh, 500 years ago when we had Saturn conjunct Pluto, uh, when that was taking place, we had on the one hand, a new religious movement launch forward from there. It was a very iconic moment two months after the exact uh, conjunction, uh, which was Martin Luther uh, and his theses uh, and hammering them to the church door, which was so powerful and iconic moment. But it ultimately represented something a lot bigger. It represented this new religious movement really starting to uh, take hold among the consciousness and among the people. But it was also the church doors that were symbolic as well, right? There was at the same time the sense of uh, power and big power being spoken to in some way. So the act of, you know, stapling those, uh, taking a hammer no less, right? That is so Mars, taking a hammer and, and really pounding against, nailing, thoughts and ideas, right? The writing against a, a door of a structure of power. Well, that is so intriguing a symbol to contemplate at this time as we are moving towards this buildup of Capricornian energy, but then we have Mars moving into Sagittarius, which is a lot more uh, experiential, which is a lot more passionate which is a lot more about conviction. Earth energy, right, as Capricorn is, it's an Earth sign. It is not as embodied as compared to fire. Now that's interesting to contemplate as well because an Earth sign would be embodied, right? It would be about what is happening on the physical level. But when you think about fire signs like Sagittarius, Fire is what you feel. It is the spark of life. It is the will to live. It is creative energy. And Mars as well, it is about what it is that you are willing to give your energy to, to pour yourself into, feel completely and passionately. And of course, yes, with Mars, it's about what you're willing to fight for. So this is a very interesting contrast that we have as we are stepping into a brand new year and a brand new decade this week. So on the one hand, we have these solid structures, strong structures of power represented by Capricorn. And then we have Mars over here. And Mars itself is a very uh, self-contained energy that represents the individual and individual power and 
and what you feel and you being complete in and of yourself and all that you feel ultimately taking that ball of energy and focusing it, exerting it out into the world. We have this very energy moving into a sign that is in its own way, very idealistic. Earth is practical, fire not so practical. You feel it, it is done, it is, it is out there. It is being uh, expressed. Whereas earth can be a lot more a calculated energy. And so we're in these times right now, and on the one hand, yes, with a week like this, all of us are thinking about ways in which to, in practical ways, improve our circumstances, make our lives better, move our lives forward, which is wonderful, right? We live in an embodied world. We are in an earthly incarnation for a reason, to honor the physical plane. So. We are doing that with all the Capricornian energy. But then there's what are you really feeling, right? What is it that rings true for you and what doesn't? And I feel like it is gonna be a week like this that begins a process that's going to be especially heightened as we move into January. It's gonna be especially heightened where all of us are being asked within ourselves, we are asking ourselves, what is true for me? What actually guides my life outside of what I'm supposed to want and what success looks like for me and wow, this makes me really happy. And at the same time, what am I willing to really let out there? Where am I willing to blaze a trail? What experience am I willing to have to decide for myself? That's the thing with Sagittarian energy. It's not enough to be told this is right, this is true, this is what we believe, right? It is more about I got to go out there and see for myself. I have to go out there and explore and decide for myself what it is that I believe. And so we're going to be seeing a very interesting exploration in a lot of the people in our lives right now. The desire for success is there, for collective success, right? Communities being successful, but the focus is more on the structures and at the same time that desire to be true and expressing yourself whether that is uh, politically whether that is uh, in terms of what you want to learn whether that is in terms of agency and exploration and getting out into the world and and learning about different people whether that is in awareness of how it is maybe we could get to know each other better and where is it that we as individuals, because again, Mars is a very individual energy, where can we take greater responsibility for how it is that we can connect with people who are unlike us in some way so that we might be better, so that we might learn more. Well, chances are it is these very interactions that can then encourage us to be that much more in our own power by deciding for ourselves, by undertaking that exploration ultimately, by knowing more of the world. It is ultimately a journey back to you, knowing yourself more deeply than you did before. And I think that these are gonna be themes that start to reveal themselves in powerful ways for all of us in our own unique ways before the week is over. What I love about this week for us, there's so much going on right now. I love the breakthroughs and the luck of Uranus and how it is now that we are taking what started as a seed, a little seed with that eclipse, or perhaps a really big seed, but that very beginning that the eclipse represented, how it is now that we are carrying it forward, seeking more information, but also attracting connections and conversations that ultimately help to move those ambitions, those new found, new glimpsed ambitions forward. And at the same time though, all of us are being asked to summon our own truth, to be in our truth, and for some to fight for our truth. Now there are different ways to fight. I'm not saying actually go out and fight. Let me be very, very clear. Uh, I am saying that it is 
valuable to consider what unique way in which you are going to express what is true for you in what unique way you are going to embody what is true for you and when you are truly connected to your truth it isn't about convincing other people again we see these like you know spiritual leaders not uh, political leaders that's a different thing but when we look at the spiritual leaders it was in beingness that they were able to connect with people most deeply very often they were people who showed wisdom who showed kindness who helped people feel connected and not alone and that is ultimately what it is that we really truly want we want to not be alone we want to feel connected to others and sometimes that exploration or that desire for connection can lead us in all kinds of directions but where it is that that desire for interconnection for spiritual bliss for uh, connecting with community for connecting with truth itself or whatever it is that's going to be true for you at this time in your growth and in your life connecting with that is a powerful way to bring you out of structures and structures that have felt like a burden to you and it is ultimately in being willing to explore these ideas and knowing the other that we are brought back to ourselves knowing ourselves more fully than we did before there is something though that i do think is fighting for and uh, that is fighting for yourself your survival your right to be who it is that you are and what i mean by that is it is about fighting against the ego within oneself because our egos can lead us in all kinds of directions right and i think about things like depression and how there is one way of understanding it that says it arises from the ego now i am being absolutely respectful of the fact that of course we can look at you know brain chemistry and brain chemistry imbalances and it is of course not as simplistic it's not necessarily just ego it can also be pain genuine pain genuine anger that needs to be looked at and healed um, and truly understood so that you can move forward from it i think that is very powerful to do that's what happens the sacred work that happens in therapist's office and why there are people who commit to that therapeutic journey for a period of years because there is the promise of peace on the other side and a lot of people do find it and i think that that is work worth doing but that work is a fight itself right it's a fight against that self that maybe is afraid of what peace may feel like but it is in that peaceful space that you find yourself we become so accustomed to strife so accustomed to the anger or the sadness or the feelings of inferiority that even though we glimpse it and know that the promise is there for peace we have to fight against that part of ourselves that is familiar with what it is that has felt like sadness to us but it is in doing the work and fighting through that that we ultimately fight for ourselves which means that we move ourselves towards peace in this life today life is really incredible there's so much to learn so much to do so much to see in this lifetime i am glad that there isn't just one lifetime but still for me personally i want to see everything in this lifetime i want to do everything in this lifetime and i want to know that i really lived and what i love about mars in sagittarius is that it is that very conviction it is the conviction that you exactly as you are right now today you deserve to live fully to see everything to do everything to explore the world and to know yourself now that is something that i think is a very noble fight that is what it means to be a spiritual warrior 
to connect with that absolute conviction and then go out and live it. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, uh, a new moon hangout with a new moon meditation, and a dedicated Facebook group, and so much more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And 2020 videos, well, decade ahead videos are already up, right? So I hope that you guys have already gotten them. They're free in the superstar space. Those have been up for superstars. They've been up for download on my website. Jupiter and Capricorn videos as well. Now the 2020 videos, if you are a superstar and you've been uh, keeping in touch with me during the recent new moon hangout that we did uh, in the superstar group as well, you know that there was a delay. There has been a little bit of a delay with the 2020 videos. I'm so sorry about that, but I'm working hard to get those done as soon as possible. They are almost done right now. So I hope to have them out really soon. So superstars will get them right away as soon as they are available. And then uh, they will be uh, published on my website for download. So if you are someone who wants first dibs on those, then uh, join Superstars and be on the lookout for the email notifications. And of course, Superstars will get those email notifications as well. So that's coming up really, really soon. But in the meantime, you can keep yourself busy with Decade Ahead Horoscopes, Special Horoscopes, and also Jupiter and Capricorn Special Horoscopes as well. 2020 is such a big year. I'm gonna be busy making a lot of Special Horoscopes. I know that right now with all the very special things that are gonna be taking place, uh, like Saturn moving into a new part of the sky, moving into the sign of Aquarius. We're gonna have a Venus retrograde season, a Mars retrograde season, uh, we are going to have the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius at the end of the year. So there's so much, and that's just barely scratching the surface. There's this whole month of June in 2020 that is really powerful as well with all the different things that are happening with an extended eclipse season that takes place over the course of a month. Lots of powerful things taking place. So. I did talk about some of this already. I've mentioned already the astrology of 2020 and Jupiter and Capricorn video that is already on my YouTube channel. Uh, but yes, some of this, wherever I thought I could and whatever was relevant, uh, most relevant rather, I mentioned for the different signs, but there was just so much. So there was only so much I could mention for each. I mean, I just tried to pick what I thought would be most uh, on the surface for that particular sign. And so far, all the videos have been like 20, 25 minutes each so far. Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but they're almost done. And when they come out, I hope you absolutely love them. I'm very excited to talk about my books. My book, The Body and the Cosmos was the number one new release on Amazon uh, in the New Age Astrology category. Thank you so much. Thank you for making it number one, uh, a milestone moment for me in my career. And it is now available in hard copy, in ebook copy on Amazon, and really wherever books are sold, you can get the body and the cosmos. It's an astrological and philosophical and spiritual exploration of the entire cosmos within. Uh, thank you to Anoki Media because they actually featured uh, this book on their website as well. They interviewed me about the book. And so I just got to talk just about the book, The Body and the Cosmos. Uh, so I will try to link to that below, but those links are also uh, on the media page on my website. And you can now get my next book, Prayers to the Sky. Prayers to the Sky is to know and to love the astrological planets more deeply. Uh, I recently shared uh, an excerpt from this book, and you can read that on my website, nadiashaw.com, uh, and you'll get to see the chapters, what the chapter names are. We've got different chapter names. Well, advanced copies are only available for a couple more days till December 31st. With the advanced copy, you get a signed book mailed by me. You get an insert of table of correspondences, and you get access to a study group worth 
$60. It costs $60 to join the study group uh, where we will spend 10 weeks every new moon, 10 new moons, uh, and each new moon will focus on a different planet in this book uh, so that you can ask questions and we can do uh, a meditation together so you can see how it is that uh, prayers to the sky has actually lived and comes together. So this is very exciting. Prayers to the Sky, my third book, advanced copies on sale now. If you'd rather wait for when it is available at booksellers everywhere, that will be in March. I'm trying to figure out the right date because like I said, there's all these retrogrades and things happening in uh, 2020. So I have to be mindful of that, but life does not stop. You keep going. And in March, this will be available on Amazon. So I will uh, keep you guys posted every step of the way. But if you get the advanced copy, you get it signed uh, by me and all these other goodies and wonderful gifts that I hope you absolutely love. Now, I have a very big announcement and it's a wonderful time, I'll tell you. It's a wonderful time where there's just so much wonderful uh, to share with you. And I am truly incredibly excited and happy to announce that I am going to be part of a roster of truly world-renowned astrologers who will be speaking at Astrology Rising in Costa Rica in early May. It's May 5th to May 12th that this big event is taking place. It is being hosted by Kaipacha, the uh, renowned astrologer on YouTube with New Paradigm Astrology. The website is Astrology Rising Costa Rica and uh, so many really big, huge, beautiful names are part of this event. Like when I say world-class astrologers, I mean it. Uh, we have got, well, myself, thank you very much. <laughs> Kaipacha invited me. I posted an interview with him with Kaipacha where we talk all about it so you can learn more through that, but I'll be there with Kaipacha. Rick Levine, the legendary Rick Levine, one of my very favorite people, Rick Levine, uh, is going to be part of this event as well. He's just such an amazing uh, person, such a beautiful soul, I'll tell you. He fully owns his Aries energy. He is present. He is right there with you, uh, but he is just so loving and so amazing. So I'm really, really grateful to be doing an event with him. Maurice Fernandez as well, again, world-renowned astrologer, evolutionary astrologer, author of many books, uh, and certainly has made his mark and continues to on the astrological world. Uh, another wise and insightful person uh, as part of this event. We've got other speakers as well, Sol Janison, uh, astrologer from Norway that a lot of people know as well, widely respected, widely known. Uh, Timothy Halloran and Ari Moshe are also well-known, uh, world-renowned evolutionary astrologers as well. I'm sensing a theme here, right? Uh, astrology that is very much a part of your soul's evolution, as I like to call it, your journey towards greater love and greater wisdom. We've also got Julia Simas from CIA, Cosmic Intelligence Agency. Uh, she's such a lovely person. Uh, I have uh, taught classes with CIA before. She has hosted them. She's amazing. And Christina Caudell. Uh, of Radiant Astrology Podcast, the hugely popular Radiant Astrology Podcast. So there's just so much that's so good at this particular event. And I'll be doing all kinds of like free webinars and presentations on the lead up. But know that this event is taking place in May. It really is all inclusive, which means that um, you pay one fee directly to Kaipacha and you show up at the airport in Costa Rica, and from there, Kaipacha takes care of everything. He literally picks you up at the airport, brings you to the resort. The entire resort is gonna be this event. The entire thing is gonna be this event. And everybody's gonna be an astrologer. Everyone's gonna be on an evolutionary journey, aware and wanting to align with love and wisdom. And then all the food is covered, all the drinks are covered, and 
Also, he's got this very detailed schedule available on that website, astrologyrisingcostarica.com. Now, he does have ticket prices in tiers, and the wonderful thing is, whether you want the room to yourself, you're traveling solo, you wanna share a room with one person or two people, uh, however it is that is best for you in terms of cost, in terms of who you're traveling with or on your own, he's got all of that laid out on his website. And like I said, he's got tiers, which means that he had early bird seats, so those are sold out. And then he's got the second uh, group of seats that he started selling right now. Uh, and then after those are sold out, the next batch are gonna be a little bit more expensive. And then the final batch more expensive. Uh, we are expecting, even though 200 seats are there, that's the maximum allowed. Uh, we're expecting at least 150, so that's really encouraging. We are expected to get really close and hopefully, fingers crossed, probably will be selling out with all the amazing uh, speakers that they are and the amazing astrology as well. And so have a look at Astrology Rising Costa Rica. Maybe this is your solar uh, eclipse message for you. And if it feels right for you to be part of this, uh, then you can either sign up through the website or contact Kaipacha. He's taking care of everything. You can figure everything out going forward from there. And if you're meant to be there, it'll be amazing to have you there. It's gonna be a lot of fun as well. I'm looking forward to it, a very big party that we're gonna have together. So after I'm in Costa Rica, which is a really big announcement and very, very exciting, um, I have three other cities I'm visiting in May, so I'm gonna be feeling a little bit like a rock star, I think. Um, I will be in Toronto in mid-May. I will be in Seattle at the Norwalk Conference uh, Memorial Day weekend. And then immediately following Memorial Day weekend, uh, the Tuesday and the Saturday following, I will be in Las Vegas, teaching in Las Vegas. Uh, as part of the NCGR Stargazers group out there. So May is gonna be a really busy month. And I've got other events as well happening, right? So I've got in March, I'll be at the end of March, I'll be in Istanbul. The beginning of April, I will be in uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, and then I'll, after that, I'll travel around a little bit in Asia, but then I'm gonna try to go back to Cancun for two or three weeks. Be with Biggie, which I'm really excited about before I hit the road again, Costa Rica and uh, these other cities. And then it won't be until September that I will be in Colorado. So there's lots and lots of opportunities to connect, to meet, to hug, uh, to learn, to grow together uh, that we have coming up. And I really look forward to connecting with you, meeting you on the road. One event that is coming up really, really soon is Florida. And so January 11th, I will be speaking with the NCGR South Florida group. They are hosting a free book launch party for me. We're gonna have a lot of fun with that. I'll be there signing books and you can come, you can take a selfie, whatever you want in the beginning. And then we are going to have a talk and an afternoon workshop as well. And so if you'd like to stay for one or both, you can learn more about that. You can sign up for that uh, through the NCGR South, uh, South Florida group. So all of those links, links in below, links on my website, taking you where you need to go so that we can connect wherever it is that I am. And so I'm really looking forward to being out in Florida. I think that's also gonna be a lot of fun. Immediately after, I will jump on a cruise, That'll be a lot of fun as well. If you really are a last minute type and you wanna join us, it's coming together really, really nicely. And that's gonna be a lot of fun as well. My very first cruise, lots of people very excited in the dedicated Facebook group that we have. And then immediately after the cruise, I jump on a plane the same day and I head to New York City and I will be speaking in New York City on the 21st of January, very, very soon. Uh, at the New York Theosophical Society, uh, hosted by Gotham Astrology. Uh, it's just such a privilege, such an awe-inspiring thing to me uh, to be speaking at the New York Theosophical Society since I was just mentioning new religious movements. The Theosophical Movement was uh, incredibly important to our modern times. Uh, I'm thinking about the work of astrologers like Alan Leo, 
uh, incredibly important to our practice. He, his book, Esoteric Astrology, really created that bridge to bring astrology into the new age, to be reintroduced into the West through the new age movement. And uh, just so many incredible spiritual uh, leaders and cultural figures um, have been part of this society. And to be speaking there is just incredible to me as one of those high point moments of, of my career. So it's gonna be a lot of fun too. And thank you to the very, very warm reception that this event has been getting. Tickets are now over 70% sold out. Early bird tickets are still available and early bird tickets are only $20. So if it is that you sign up early bird, not only do you get the ticket for only $20, but also you can get uh, my books at a discount as well at 25% off. Uh, and then after the early bird tickets sell out, uh, the regular price I think is $30. Um, and the regular price for the books are $20 each as well. And if there happen to be any tickets left over, it is expected to sell out. But if we do have some room left over, there might be limited space uh, at the door. That would again be $30 at the door, uh, $20 for the books signed by me. Uh, but I will be there regardless. I will be there and I think it'll be so much fun, but yeah, the event is expected to sell out and it's expected because of the amazing response that you guys have been giving it. So thank you. Thank you so much for the beautiful and warm welcome. I haven't been to New York city in 20 years and I think that we're going to have a lot of fun together. Upcoming live events include Starstruck. Starstruck is a huge online astrology summit, and you can listen to my talk for free by going to astrostyle.com slash Nadia. Now, this amazing summit is being hosted by the legendary Astro Twins. It was so nice to meet them online. I can't tell you, it made me endlessly happy. They are so lovely. Uh, such incredible women and so inspiring to astrologers everywhere. I looked up to them for so, so very long. Uh, and so to have that moment where I'm like, wow, I'm actually just sitting here, we're talking, that was pretty cool. And it was very cool to be part of this event. Uh, again, huge astrologers, world-renowned astrologers are part of this, including Susan Miller, who's a pretty big deal. <laughs> she's got millions and millions of people reading her. Uh, and so she's a part of this event too, and many, many other uh, amazing astrologers as well. You can see some pictures there, but if you go to astrostyle.com slash Nadia, if you go to the link, then you actually can see for yourself the different astrologers that are there. And again, if you use the link with my name in it, then you get to listen to my talk for free, where I talk about this whole journey from uh, earth to air that we are just at the beginning of and will be undertaking in 2020 and beyond. All of these astrologers talked in some way or another about what's coming up in 2020, in the year ahead, in the decade ahead as well. I spoke about the earth to air stuff uh, and it was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and I hope that you enjoy that. And I hope that you enjoy that talk. And Synchronicity University is coming up at the end of this month. The winter session uh, will begin. I don't know if I'll be able to have a spring session just because I'll be bouncing around so much and traveling so much, but we'll see how it works out and how it comes together. But at least for now, I have committed and I will be doing the winter session. Uh, and the winter session, it starts the last Saturday of January. I think that's the 25th, I think off the top of my head. But anyways, it's just before my birthday. And so I'll be celebrating my birthday uh, by talking about Venus with you guys. So there's a class on Venus in the astrology chart. We'll be doing uh, Pluto in aspect of planets, Jupiter in aspect of planets, another on uh, chart rulerships and another on lunar mansions. So I look forward to meeting you at synchronicityuniversity.com and interacting with you live and in real time and meeting you in class. My amazing friend Katie Weber comes out with her annual success pack. Uh, she is a world renowned feng shui expert. She has helped me so much in my journey 
uh, as well. And she just is an amazing person. So she's absolutely worth reading. I purchase one of these every single year uh, and she's just such a wealth of insight and wisdom. I just think she's amazing. So I love sharing her with you guys. And yes, her success pack for 2020 Year of the Rat is out now. Now the great thing is that the Year of the Rat doesn't technically begin until the very beginning of February. However, it's good to look ahead. It's good to be prepared. Like I said, I'm always one of the very people who purchases this in the fall. Uh, and so you can learn more about her amazing success pack in the links below. And finally, I'm so very happy. Thank you so much for all the people who purchased raffle tickets so far. So far, we have sold 688 tickets. I'm so very grateful to you guys. And as I told you, I will be covering PayPal fees. I'll be, you know, adding a little something to it. I'll be doing a top up as well. Uh, and so we have actually decided to extend the raffle up until January 6th. Uh, what happens in the Latin world is around that time is the day of the three kings. And that is celebrated as the astrologer's day because that is a, a commemoration of the three wise men who were astrologers. And so it seemed like a good time to extend the raffle just a little bit. I wanted to be sure to give people lots of time uh, to become aware of all the incredible people who have donated prizes, uh, all the astrologers and readers and people who have donated books and products and services. So I want to be sure to let you guys know, like one at a time, I've been, uh, posting on social media. I've been sending out newsletters to let you guys know of all the incredible prizes that are available. I did want to share one uh, very special story, very near and dear to my heart. I do have the names in front of me here and I want to be sure not to get it wrong. So you know, normally when I'm doing this, I'm looking right into the camera, <laughs> like I am right there with you. Uh, and I still am, but I wanted to be sure to, uh, to get the names right. So a lovely, uh, one of my superstars, a lovely woman named Kara, she actually uh, purchased 20 tickets and then she reached out to me and tickets are a dollar each, right? The raffle tickets. And it doesn't matter how many tickets you purchase, like really it's, it's the act, right? It's the care that you put in. So whether you're purchasing one ticket, whether you're purchasing a hundred tickets, I appreciate you each and every one of you. Thank you. Whatever you can give, uh, it means so much because it goes to a charity that means so much to me. Uh, and I'll talk about that charity in a moment, but I uh, did want to give a shout out to Kara because she's just so very lovely in the actions that she took. So what happened was Kara works for a company called Sea and Shore Contracting in Randolph, Massachusetts. Can we just spend a moment to send this amazing company Sea and Shore Contracting in Randolph, Massachusetts. En envision it now, send them a lot of love as I am as well right now, because um, what this company does is they go to their employees and they say, what charity do you want to donate to? And then they donate a thousand dollars to that charity on behalf of the employee. And Kara uh, was uh, at the forefront of ensuring that bestfriends.org got a thousand dollar donation. And I started crying when I read that. It meant so much to me, not just about the money, but it was about the fact when I thought about all the people who were involved in actually uh, doing what they could to demonstrate care and love. And bestfriends.org is an organization that is very near and dear to my heart. I saw a documentary on what they do on Netflix called Champions. And really, I watched that on an airplane and it changed me deeply. It changed something in my soul and in my spirit when I watched that. And it made me really realize that, I, I've said it enough, I don't have to get emotional when I say it, but it made me realize that no matter what you have been through, no matter what trauma, what abuse, I mean, we as people and we as life, as life, we are remarkably resilient. And whatever it is you've been through, you can love again and you will love again. And their work uh, that this organization does, it reflects that to me, uh, that conviction. 
and it isn't just the animals because they take in all kinds of animals anywhere an animal has experienced abuse or trauma or environmental trauma whatever it is they have created safe havens for those animals and spaces of rehabilitation uh, spaces to prepare them for rehoming where needed as well and where possible as well but it's also the people who work there uh, and you can see the people who work there in the work you heal yourself right and we all find our own unique ways to pursue what we need to to heal ourselves but that ultimately is what i think all of us are pursuing and again we do it in our own unique ways in our own unique avenues um, for me it's through astrology it's through sharing on youtube and through my books uh, but these people who work with best friends i mean they are right there with these animals and and you can actually see the workers themselves being healed in the journey being healed in the process and to me that is a very powerful thing just on so many levels so it is sacred work it is beautiful work and um i would really encourage you to watch this documentary and there is still time to buy raffle tickets so you getting one raffle ticket uh it goes that dollar is going to go to bestfriends.org and if you want to learn more about them you can visit uh, their website as well but that dollar is uh it means so much and the fact that all these people came together to get a thousand dollars to bestfriends.org, their local chapter, um, I just thought about how many people were involved, but also how much healing is going to be possible because of that money, you know. And so it was very meaningful to me. I just started crying, and I I just felt it very deeply. So thank you to Kara. She is a superstar. I appreciate you. Thank you to everybody who's donated anything so far. I appreciate you guys so very much. Uh, and lots and lots of prizes. I myself am giving away like over 20 prizes. So I'm giving away signed books, uh, Synchronicity University classes, special horoscopes, all kinds of things I'm giving away also. So uh, have a look at that, check that out. I think we're at almost 60 prizes altogether. Uh, and so anything you can donate is very appreciated. Uh, and like I said, everything you donate will go to them. And that uh, when I make that payment online, I will post it on my social media. I will show everybody. I'll even try to put it up in a video as well uh, so that you guys can, can see that absolutely, um, there's absolute integrity where it comes to that. And, um, and this is work that means a lot to me. So thank you for supporting that. Thank you for resonating with what I share. You know, I think that this, uh, my affinity for bestfriends.org, um, it is a reflection of what I share anyways. And so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here for the very last video, uh, weekly video anywhere's of 2019. But look, I'm going to be here, right? I was thinking about this earlier. I have been a full-time astrologer. I have been at NadiaShaw.com for 13 and a half years. I am not going anywhere. I'm looking forward to the next 13 and a half years. And then the next 13 and a half, like I am just looking forward to being here with you week after week. And of course, it is these moments, right? Like times when a not only a year is ending, but a decade is heading. And it is times like this where not only is a year ending, but a decade is ending as well. That can uh, make a person reflective, like I am feeling reflective uh, right now. And uh, I just feel filled with gratitude. Thank you. Whether this is the first time or second time you're watching me, whether you've been watching me uh, for years, whether you've been there from the very beginning, my very first videos at the end of 2008, uh, each and every one of you, just thank you for being a part of my spiritual journey, for seeing me as some small part of your sacred journey as well. Um, and the ways in which you bless me there are endless ways in which my audience blesses me and you're a part of that so thank you thank you so much and happy new year and happy new decade and uh and i will be here and i'm looking forward to it it'll be a great decade right so 
Thank you again. I hope that you have a wonderful week and all of the wonderful stuff that you heard about the, in this video, links are in the description below. My heartfelt gratitude to you and just have a great New Year's. And until we connect again, take care and it'll be a great week. Enjoy.